Welcome to AMS Talks. I'm joined by Rick Bacon, CEO of Aquametrology Systems. Today, he'll be talking with us about the urgent need for the water industry to accelerate validation and the adoption of technology innovations in order to meet the goals for safe drinking water and sustainability in the most cost-effective manner. Thanks for joining us, Rick. Welcome. Now, can you tell us a little bit about the challenges to water technology innovation? Yeah, so it begins with, well, firstly, the need. Um, there are lots of estimates around about how much money needs to be spent on bringing uh, water uh, quality up to safe drinking water standards. And we're talking about millions and millions of dollars. So innovation has a very, very important role to play in bringing the cost of that down and bringing close to the time when that safe drinking water is available to people. The challenge is, though, uh, that um, new technologies have to be proven. And the current model is that um, a new technology has to be proven just about everywhere because everyone's water is different. Um, and that proving process generally uh, takes a long time. Uh, the data that's um, made available during that uh, test validation process generally is very spotty. Um, doesn't capture the sort of changes that happen within a treatment system uh, in real life uh, because the time taken to capture data on the, um, uh, the performance of that system. And of course, in, in the COVID era, having people going on site, taking samples of a treatment system that's being validated, sent to a lab which is already busy uh, doing COVID testing, makes the whole uh, innovation process uh, validation process of new innovations, very, very stretched out, costly, and uh, essentially at the end of it, you've only proven it for that one site. Well, given these challenges, how do we get beyond the barriers to innovation? So the concept of water hubs, water innovation centers has been around for some time. Uh, and there are various parts of the country in the US. Uh, the most recent is the water tower in Gwinnett County uh, in Georgia where new technologies have a chance to be proven. Uh, the challenge again though is that it'll be the water in Gwinnett County or the conditions that prevail in Gwinnett County on which an innovation technology will be proven. Uh, it won't prove that uh, that technology can work under the conditions that apply in Minnesota or California or, or Alabama. And so, again, we're back to the old problem where we've got to go and do it in Alabama, Minnesota and California. What we've been doing in AMS is actually work with our own uh, technologies, bringing water in from as far as field as um, Maine, Florida, bringing that water in and using that water, applying our system to that water. So essentially, we're bringing the mountain uh, to the treatment system. And this is a, an approach that water hubs should be considering because if they can bring in water, very different characteristics, very few waters are similar from one treatment place to another, bring that water in and then validate the treatment system on that imported water. And we're not talking about millions of gallons, but most treatment systems are more than capable of being demonstrated on a reasonable volume of water then that will demonstrate in one place that that technology is capable of servicing a number of different water qualities across the country. And that can be five, 10, 20 uh, different locations, you name it. It's a very sustainable way of um, proving a new technology and addressing this diversity problem that arises with validating new technologies. It's very convincing, but how does the adoption of real-time water quality analyzers at these water hubs influence the game of technology acceptance in the water quality sector? So the, the next piece to this, if we've got over the hill of bringing water to the water hub, is making, demonstrating that that technology is working. And very honestly, taking a few samples now and then of a water treatment system in operation even a pilot system, is just not good enough. You need to be able to stress these technologies, turn them on and off and see how quickly they recover. Uh, see whether they work uh, seven days continuously without uh, interruption. 
And you can only do that with real time continuous data. You want to be able to tweak the system and see how it responds. Uh, how, if you change the quality of the water coming in, how it responds to that. So real time data is absolutely essential and that data can then be streamed. It can be streamed back to uh, Minnesota where that water came from. So the, the client, uh, the utility in Minnesota can see what's going on with a validation technology um, uh, in Gwinnett County. And so you've got the remote data access, high density data, uh, short circuiting uh, or shortening certainly uh, the process of the validation of new technologies, which is the major, major hurdle today of um, new technology adoption. Well, um, the importance of your message can't be overstated. Uh, clearly, the future of access to safe and affordable drinking water lies with technology innovation. Uh, so your message is really important to get out there. Appreciate you being with us. Thanks very much. Got it. Talk to you soon. Have a good day.